Hi everyone, my name is Neshe and welcome to eScan Confocal Microscopy Virtual Demo and Webinar presented by Confocal NL and Axiom Optics. Our webinar's outline is as follows. We're going to do a quick introduction of the RCM system and show how it works. Then we're going to move on to samples. Sample 1 is the chromosomes, SYCP3 and LXA488 stain. The sample 2 is BPAE cells with the Nikron prep. Uh, three color DAPI actin 488 and mitotracker tracker red stain. And we'll be happy to take any questions from the email addresses info at confocalnl or info at axiomoptics.com. And Axiom Optics is the official distributor of the RCM unit in North America region. Now, Yeroen will present how RCM works, and he is a product application specialist at Confocal NL. Thank you, Nancy, for the introduction. So, welcome everybody to this webinar and virtual demo of the Rescan Confocal Microscope. First, I will uh, briefly uh, introduce the Rescan technology. I will also show different configurations of an RCM system. And after that, we will move on to the virtual demo. So here we see a typical configuration of a rescan confocal system. The rescan confocal is uh, the orange box, which you see over here. It can attach to, to any microscope stand, so not limited to Nikon, but you can also put to Zeiss or Olympus or Leica. Um, and it sits in between the microscope and the camera. Additionally, you will, need, uh, you will also need the laser source, and I will talk about this later. First, um, a brief introduction into confocal microscopy because these are uh, essential uh, essential that we need to know before we start talking about rescan microscopy. So, in a confocal microscope, you eliminate the laser, and by using a pair of scanning mirrors, you steer this laser across the sample. Then, uh, fluorescence is returning. This light is de scanned by the same mirror and pass through the dichroic mirror and pass through the panel, which takes care of the optical section. That you will detect it with the PMT. And based upon the position of the mirror, you will assign a pixel value in your image. And this way, you build up the image from left to right and from top to bottom. In a rescan for focal microscopy, however, we do not use a PMT as detector, but we use a camera. Can be a CCD or CMOS strip. Um, and what we do is we take this uh, de scanned emission light, send it to the panel like in any other confocal. Then we use a second pair of re scanning mirrors that take the light onto the camera chip. And why do we use the camera? It's because the camera is uh, actually much more sensitive than a PMT. The quantum efficiency is about uh, four times higher, meaning that you detect four times as many photons in your, in your image. So if you have a thin sample, this is especially uh, important. So here we see a schematic representation of the principle. We have again the laser light coming in, and the this hits the scanner, scans the laser light across the sample, and then the red beam is the emission light, which is better return. Be scanned by the mirror, passed through the panel, and onto the rescanner. What you can also see in this, uh, in this animation is that the sweep of the rescanner over here is twice that of the scanner. So here, you can see the angular amplitude is two times as big. This increases the lateral resolution by 40%. So, our typical confocal reaches a resolution of 240 nanometers. And using this rescan principle with the double sweep will increase the resolution to 179. We see uh, what it means uh, when you image a biological sample. Well, on the left, we see uh, chromosomes image with a regular confocal with 1.0 error unit pinhole. Uh, this is actually what most biologists would use. If you decrease the panel, you can uh, improve the lateral resolution of the system. In theory, you should be able to see 170 nanometers as well with this kind of panel size. But because the, uh, 
relative insensitive EMT. We get lots of noise, and this actually destroys the, the information which is in the image. Or if you look at the right, this is the RCM image. You can see it's much more clean, there's much less noise, and you can also see more structure in this image. Um, this uh, sample we will also look at uh, during the demo, which I will show after this short presentation. A couple of examples taken by the RCM. You can see we get an image beautiful cells. Here we have a plus seven cell by uh, Andrea Squirts. Here we have an air quality stem cell, purple color by uh, Julia Swartz. And here we have a UTOS cell, same for colloidin, and we have spirits. In terms of configuration, we are very flexible. So we can attach to any microscope which has a 1x C mount. Um, so this can be, for example, a Nikon TID or a Nikon TI2, an Olympus IX81 or IX83, the MyQ. You can have a uh, like a DMI 8 or a DM, DM 6000 or a size system, for example, the LSA 720. In terms of camera, we work together with Hamamatsu, Kendo, PCO, and Photometrics. We can think about models such as uh, Flash, the Xyla, the Edge, or the Prime. And in terms of lasers, we use uh, Omicron, Coherent, Tropica, or Oxius lasers. Uh, the importance about the lasers is, is that. They need to be triggerable. So we need to have analog and digital modulation for the laser. And for the camera, we need a level trigger. In terms of soft software, we have integration in NIS elements, which I will speak today as well. And we also have a micro manager for the driver, which is free of charge. The micro manager is also able to control all types of microscopes. We have different models of the RCM. The first, the first one that I want to show today is the RCM Visible, which is uh, suitable for uh, laser wavelengths 405, 488, 561, and 640. And at 488, it reaches a level resolution down to 150 meters. Uh, the scan, scan speed can be up to 4 frames per second, or 512 or 512. And we have a fixed pin hole in the machine, meaning that uh, it's optimized for high magnification and high NA objectives. Um, and it's also easy to use because you cannot change the pin on so there's no, it's not a parameter that's taken away. Because uh, a camera is also very sensitive, or can be very sensitive in the near infrared, we also have an RCM near infrared. And this is actually the first point scanning near infrared microscope. Reach, reaches a lateral resolution down to 280 nanometers, if you're excited, and 80. And the rest of the specs are the same as for the RCM physical. Here we have an example of the RCM near infrared. Uh, these are uh, UPEC cells, they have a large colloidic center Here we have uh, a zoom in of this region, so you can see there's nice detail in the image, it's, it's sharp. And the contrast is high. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, just briefly uh, to summarize, the RCM is a uh, super resolution for focal. It's very sensitive because of the camera. It's easy to use and it's affordable as well. So now we will move on to the uh, to the to the live demo. Uh, first, I will show uh, the chromosome slide. So. I will share Miss Elements now. Okay, so this is Miss Elements. Um, as this is uh, this this webinar is not about Miss Elements, so I will only briefly introduce the different different features here. So up here we have uh, different optical configurations. We change from dark to, to eyepieces. 
or towards the bypass. Bypass is a function that's on the RCM that allows you to scan epicurescence illumination directly on the camera chip. So you can use the camera at full speed, which makes it much easier to do the focusing. And then right below, we have the settings for RCM. So these settings will use different laser. Then for each setting here, I can choose the field of view. And depending on uh, how big the field of view is, I can change my exposure time. So at 2048 pixels, I will get a four seconds exposure and then I will have the full camera chip. I can also reduce the frame rate by uh, increase the speed actually by choosing a smaller field of view. For example, at 512 pixels, you can go up to uh, four frames per second. Um, then I have here a, a slider for laser power. So this one allows me to adjust uh, the laser power for each channel. And what is important to uh, note here as well, the laser power that we use is uh, very little. So we use only the um, order of microwatts that we measure at the sample plane. So we're also very light efficient meaning that for life cell experiments, you have less bleaching as well. Okay, so I guess we're ready to start the demo. In order to find the sample, I will first switch to the bypass mode. I will also give you a short overview of the system here. So, um, we have the, the camera on this side, uh, Ahamamatsu, Waka flash V3, and here is the RCM. Here is the bypass uh, knob, which allows me to scan the, uh, the white field image directly on the camera chip. And then here is the microscope, obviously. We use a 100x curved objective today, so it's uh, quite a good objective to ensure we, uh, we, we achieve optimal resolution. So I just switched to the bypass mode. Now I will click play in the image here which allows me to find uh, the sample. So here we go. These are chromosomes. Looking for um, chromosomes in a certain maturation stage. Then the, the strands, and we actually cannot see that here because the resolution is not good enough in the white field image. Um, but you actually want to see the separation in the strand. So that's what I'm aiming for here. As a reference, I can first make a white field image. So I will run a small Z set. I'm sure I have all the, all the optical info. As you can see, it takes a little, little bit longer, obviously, because it's a point scanner. But my resolution is actually higher. I'm now able to resolve the structure between the two strands here. Let's see the dark line in the middle. Uh, over here, it's quite obvious. If I now go back to my white field image, Same, we need to find the same area. Just a second, or side by side. So we were looking um, here. That's right over here. Yeah, as you can see, uh, the image is flipped, but as you can see, there is no no way I can resolve this structure in, uh, in the white field image, whereas in the RCM image, I'm able to resolve. It's important to uh, realize that this is still a raw data. So what I can do now is I can save this and I can uh, decompose it.
And the decomposition I will do in uh, Alphonse Essential from SPI. So I'm just going to show that window now. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Open the image. Right here. And now I can I guess some parameters. As this webinar is also not about uh, the conclusion, I will not go into detail here. But I will just set the uh, parameters such that uh, they are good. And I will do a deconvolution express, meaning that I have no control over the deconvolution process. So it's essentially a blind deconvolution. This process might take maybe two minutes, or maybe one minute. My computer is not that fast here. So I know that uh, I can also enables to uh, use the GPU for the information which is much faster. Anyway, it's a small stack, so in the case one, we can say, okay, done, so done. And now we can show the images side by side. Right? So if we do the twin slicer, for the raw data I will now show on the left, and on the right I will show the people data. We also change the color of the image. But here we go. So let's go back to that same spot where we were before. That's so right over here. So here you can see now I'm really able to resolve the structure. On the left, you already see in the raw data that it's there. That it's fair, you barely see it. And on the right, because it's too cold, uh, you get another improvement of the resolution by 40%. So it means my, uh, I can achieve the resolution down to 120 nanometers. If I now draw a line here, a line profile, I will also be able to measure this between the two strands to show you that it's uh, really not actually limited. Um, line is the default profile. This line over here is the, the two line that's the, uh, that's the raw data. Now I will measure the distance between the two peaks. And in this case, it's uh, 180 nanometers. So it's it's well below the, the 240 nanometers that you would get with the standard control system. And this is the, uh, Multiple spots here where we can where we can where you can see this effect, for example, here as well. You see a nice twist in this chromosome over here. We're not really able to resolve it in the raw data; it's just too close. So we will line go about here. Measure the distance of the one second. Okay, so that's the uh, chromosome uh, slide for now. Uh, I will now jump to the DPEA slide. So that's uh, endothelial cells came for different uh, colors. So I will again share the this element screen. And uh, the purpose of this slide is just to show you that uh, the, and the possibilities RCM are only limited to what your microscope can do. So if your microscope can do stitching, for example, then this will also work with the RCM. If you can do Z-stacks, then it will also work. Everything that uh, your, your microscope allows you to do, you will be able, able to do as well with, uh, uh, with the RCM. Let's see. Again, I go into the bypass mode to focus. You can see I'm obviously way out of focus, so there we go. So I think it's quite a nice cell. So 
can see this uh, slide has been imaged a lot, so there are some, some rich spots. Here, uh, it's nicely dry. So that's the image here. Um, as I mentioned, the slide has multiple uh, colors, so I can show you the uh, area here as well. That. And we have uh, we have Dabi as well. We have three colors. That's actually the center of this. Again, I can make a uh, recording in white view for uh, comparison. Three colors. Yeah. And you were nicely in focus. I'll do it one more time because you saw there was some big focus in your in the, in the image. Now I'll go to the RCM mode. So we get a bit more laser power for the TV channel. Yeah. Just that checking if a couple of settings are okay, it's fine. So I can now add these different colors. Say run it out. As you can see, this is uh, more up close because uh, the RCM, RCM's field of view is not as big as the uh, field of view of the white view. But here we see a nice fine structure, especially in the acting channel. And if I look at uh, my white field, well, I hope you agree, I'm not really able to resolve the uh, Fine structure here. Much better in this image. And this is just uh, the ex added lateral resolution that the system gives you. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm done with the demo. Uh, let me put here the slides. Okay. So thank you for your attention. Uh, I'll get the word back to you, Meshi. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach us at info at axiomoptics.com uh, or info at confocalnl. And uh, thank you for joining. <laughs>